All right, it is time. DigiKey and Adafruit present. Hi, on MPI. This week's Ion MPI is from TE. That's right. New products are on DigiKey, Adafruit. What is the new product? Okay. From DigiKey this week. Happy New Year. Yeah. Happy New Year. First INPI of 2021. We're going to switch it up with a solid state relay. Um, I actually pick out every week a couple different products that I might have for INPI. I'm not going to tell you what the other one would have been maybe this week. I might do it next week. But when I picked this out of my DigiKey box, um, I just thought, oh my God, this is so cute. This is like the cutest NPI. I got to do it for this week. So this week it is the, um, I want to get the full name right, the SSRMP, which I think is like uh, solid state relay micro package or mini package uh, from TE. These are adorable little solid state relays. So um, here is what it looks like. Solid state relay. I, I just love the build of this, right? I guess it's a TE and a subgroup called uh, Potter and Brumfield, which just sounds like a, a, a really great pub in England or something. Um, this solid state relay, they're small, right? They're, they're only, you know, it's like about an inch by an inch by, you know, three quarters of an inch or so, a half an inch. Um, but these are pretty powerful relays. I mean, they can handle up to 480 uh, volts AC, up to 25 amps. Um, they've got a, a great mechanical package. Um, what I like is, of course, they give you a 3D model, so you can uh, put this into your mechanical design, import it directly. They have, like, STLs and, and 3D PDFs and all that good stuff. Um, this solid-state relay is perfect for when you have a bunch of AC you want to control. Um, so inside, so this is the mechanical dimensions. As I mentioned, it's quite small. It's about uh, 22 uh, millimeters by 22 millimeters square. And then there's a, a heat sink that's... Um, that does extend out as a solid chunk of aluminum, which is quite nice uh, for heat sinking your solid state relay. And inside uh, there is a um, photo opto isolated um, input that controls uh, the triac output for controlling AC. Uh, so I like that they, they put that extra step of having it be uh, isolated. Um, there's zero cross and non-zero cross uh, versions. We can chat about that later. Um, for connecting to it, uh, it's got these spade connector ends. Um, they're standard ones, I think quarter inch. The other is uh, 0.1785, which is some sixteenths or whatever, you know, five sixteenths or something um, of an inch. And you can use standard uh, spade connectors to connect to it. So, you know, we saw a kit, but um, you can also get cables pre made with spade lugs on them for very quick connects. Um, so, why use a solid state relay? Well, you don't have to for a lot of use cases. Um, and, uh, you know, often people start AC control or DC control projects with a relay. Uh, here's a relay from TE. These come in like every size and shape. And um, uh, relays are great. They're inexpensive and they're really easy to use and uh, they're fully isolated. So this is, you know, a I love these transparent relays, which are also handy for telling what's going on with your relay, but also wonderful for documentation. Um, so on the right, you see there's a coil. When current passes through this coil, uh, it turns into an electromagnet. There's a little ferromag uh, ferromagnetic core inside of it. And on the left-hand side, you see um, a single pole uh, double throw uh, connection. That little armature in between goes back and forth. If it's magnetized, it pulls in. Uh, otherwise, it's kind of pushed out by a spring contact. And that's what controls the switch, right? The switch is either connected to the left or to the right uh, pole. Um, so this is how a relay works, and relays are great because they're so simple, right? You apply power, it switches. You remove power, it's no longer switching. This is like an ancient electronic technology that we're still using, um, and it's great. But why would you not want to use a relay? Well, one thing about a relay is, is they're a little slow, right? They do take, you know, up to 10 milliseconds because there's like a mechanical switch. They have to mechanically move. Um, this little flipper from the left to the right. So they're not instantaneous, right? There's, there is some millisecond delay and it's inconsistent. You, you, you can measure it, but it might be different each time depending on the temperature or, um, you know, mechanical stresses on the system. And also, you know, eventually as those two contacts, this is a two photos on the left is a um, totally clean contact. As that contact gets closer and closer, um, infinitesimally close, it sort of starts to chatter a little bit, and there's an arc uh, from the voltage across the gap, um, and that can cause oxidation. On the right, you can see after like 100,000 switches, 
you get this like corroded contact. And so that's why relays are replaceable. They're, they're, you know, for hobbyist projects, they're soldered in place. But for, you know, if you look at the relays, for example, in, um, uh, if you ever if you walk by like a, a, a light switch on um, like a cross crossing light um, or a, a traffic lamp, um, they use relays and you'll see these gigantic removable relays. And, you know, whenever the traffic light breaks, it's usually because the relay, you know, this happened to the relay because they're, they're switching on and off, you know, every few minutes to control the traffic. Um, and so they get oxidized and they stop working. And it's, you know, it happens after 10,000, 20,000, whatever, thousand contacts. And so if, you're, if you need something to switch very quickly or you need something that does not oxidize and corrode after some time, um, that's when you'd want to move to an SSR. So a solid state relay, which is, you know, it says the word relay in it, but it's not really, a re I mean, like, it's not like a solid state version of a relay. It's like a totally different mechanism of operation, but in the name stuck. Um, so in this case, this is a, a dimmer switch. So, you know, if you have lighting, for example, this is a, a common use of SSRs. You Not only are they used for switching on and off, just like turning on an oven or turning off an AC or whatever, but they're used for dimming lights. Um, and so, you know, lights are, they're going to be operating at 50 hertz or 60 hertz. So you want to like PWM the light and you can see here um, the blue line is the AC voltage and then the red line is when you turn it on and off and you see like it basically it's only on half the time and so the light is halfway dim. So it's, a, it's different than DC voltage PWMing but it's kind of similar. You're, you're cutting the AC waveform down to, to reduce the amount of current going through your lamp. Um, but think about it, if you're switching on a relay on and off 60 hertz, 60 times a second to, to get this dimming effect, well, I mean, it's going to burn out in five minutes. It's not going to work out. And also notice that um, you may want to turn on, in this case it doesn't, but sometimes you want to turn on the power only when it crosses zero so you don't get this big spike in voltage. And, and for those, you can use a zero crossing SSR. They're, they have cool properties where they only turn on right when the, the voltage starts to um, move up from positive or negative from zero volts, um, which can reduce wear on some electronic uh, components, especially lighting if, if it's incandescent and you want to um, slowly ramp up the voltage. So, um, you know, DigiKey has a really good guide if you want to use SSRs. Uh, you know, there, there is a couple of downsides. One, it's going to be more expensive than a relay. You're a relay, they're, they're like a couple bucks. SSR, it is about $10 instead, so it's more expensive. Second, you do have to heat sink them. Uh, third, some of them are not opto-isolated. This one happens to be, um, but not all of them are. So uh, do, do check out this uh, guide that DigiKey wrote to let you know all about it. And of course, they're only good for AC voltage, not good for DC voltage. Um, and the, they usually have more limitations on the amount of current and voltage because it has to, it's not a mechanical switch, it has to kind of dissipate some heat. So that will affect how much uh, current you can switch on and off and the voltage and all that. So it, you have to care about the rating a little bit more. They have uh, lower ratings usually. Um, but you know, if you're doing AC switching, especially of lighting, or you just don't want to deal with the mechanical chatter, or you just want something that's uh, a solid state solution, um, this is an adorable SSR and it, it's the size of a relay. Yeah. Here's um, some Thanks. different options you've got. Uh, they're all uh, activated by four to 12 volts, I think, uh, the series. There's 240 volt AC version and there's a 480 volt AC version. Um, they can go from 10 amps uh, up to 25 amps mounted to a heat sink. Check the data sheet. And there's of course a zero voltage or, you know, turn on whatever the heck you want version of these SSR. So they have, there's a whole family of them. Um, that said, we picked out one that we thought was pretty handy. I think this is a 24 volt, 16 amp uh, version, um, and uh, you can check it out. These are available uh, from DigiKey, and um, check out the whole family. Just search for SSRMP to get um, the listing of all the different products that are available in this family. And don't forget the ways to find this. You can go to digikey.com forward slash short for C five and. TV, or you can look at the code here, 41SSRMP240216ND, or you can just search for, what do you think? Good thing to think about. SSRMP. In. You think that Yeah, be? that's the whole family. Yeah. Because there's, there's some that are a little more expensive. Like, I think there's a more expensive version. There's ones that are like 10 bucks, um, depending on the, the, the uh, functional right, specifications. Let's take a look at it. 
Okay, so this is, what I liked is, it's a, such an adorable little package. First off, look at how small and cute this is. It's like so small and cute. Mm -hmm. um, so it's got this embedded heat sink, which I really liked. It's like potted in. It's a nice thick heat sink with mounting tabs. It's nice and flat, so you can mount it to a heat sink. Um, everything is labeled. It's, you know, got the Rojas label on it. It's got the output telling you exactly what it's rated for. It's got the input telling you, sorry, it's 4 to 32 volts DC. Uh, the UR and the CE marking as well. And, okay, check this out. There's a little LED. I thought this was so cute. You can, um, when you turn this on, a little light goes on. So I'm just giving it 5 volts. Um, so I'm obviously not going to add to any AC, so this is, this is safe for me to, to touch just fine. But um, there's a little indicator to tell you. So, you know, if this was going really fast, it would be dim, but you'd at least be able to see that it's being activated. So I like that about this... Uh, cute little SSRMP series. So and check it out. Very that handy. that is this week's Ion MPI with DigiKey and Adafruit. Hi, on MPI.